I was looking at buying some new film on eBay recently uh, when I noticed this new GP3 220 film, uh, which I knew I wanted to buy and try out. Now, the reason I wanted to try this film out is not because of any special quality the film has about, you know, how it renders light or how it makes photos look, but because of the fact that it's 220 film. And as far as I know, it's the first 220 film that's been manufactured for 10 or 15 years. So what's special about 220 film? Well, as you probably know, normal medium format film is called 120 film and gives you, for example, 10 6x7 negatives per roll of film. But with 220 film, you actually get double the number, so a total of 20 6x7 negatives per roll, which, depending on you know how you're using the film, where you're using the camera, is preferable for a few reasons. So, for example, 220 film should be, hypothetically, a bit cheaper than regular 120 film, just because you're paying for half the amount of packaging. And also, you need to change a roll of film half as often. Uh, changing a roll of film can be quite an interruption when you're trying to take pictures. Okay, so I'll now load the film into my medium format camera. And what I'm using here is a Mamiya 7. And loading a Mamiya 7 with 220 film is almost exactly the same as loading it with the normal 120 film, uh, apart from one or two things which I'll, I'll mention in a minute. If you do want to try 220 film though, you should just check your camera's manual first, just to make sure it'll accept it, because you know some won't. So a Mamiya 7 will take it, a Pentax 6x7 will take it, but for example something like a Hasselblad you'll need a special A24 back, uh, so yeah, just do double check. Okay, so looking at the pressure plate, you can see the little white dot next to the 120 mark. You just need to flip that around so it's at the 220 mark, and that's all you need to do. And that just means the camera will stop cocking the shutter after 20 exposures rather than the normal 10. Okay, so the camera's now ready to shoot. I'm going to the Victoria and Albert Museum now, and that whole area should be a good place to test the film. Okay, so I'm now going to develop the film, but before I do, I'm just going to talk a bit about how 220 film fits in double the amount of photos, uh, because it is important if you're developing yourself and you're going to be loading the film into a developing tank. 
So if you imagine that's 220 film on the top and normal 120 film on the bottom. So with regular 120 film, you just have this long uninterrupted strip of backing paper with the film sort of laid on top with the film just secured to the backing paper at one end with that uh, yellow masking tape you see on the left there. Well, with 220 film, you can see we're missing the whole middle part of the backing paper. So you get a strip of backing paper, then the film, then another strip of backing paper. And it's just that tiny amount of space saved from not having that middle piece of backing paper that allows for double the amount of actual film. So yeah, do just bear that in mind if you're going to be loading the film into a processing tank. Okay, so now for the actual development. Now I found that Shanghai GP3 100 isn't the most well-documented film, uh, but just really up on what other people have done. I think a development time of 10 minutes with my ID11 developer should be about right. Okay, so now we can finally talk about the quality of the photos and decide whether or not this film is worth buying again. And I guess one of the most important things is just to look at how the film renders, you know, fine detail. And zooming in, you can see that, yes, you can get some very fine detail. And there's another example. So there's zoomed in, and then the whole photo. But the real issue with this film, and the reason I wouldn't get it again, is just the fact that it gives you this very, very high contrast in all your photos. So you can see for a photo like this, it just gives you a lot of black and a lot of white, and not too much in between. And you can see for a photo like this, I'm also losing information in the midtones. So you can see there the building is kind of blending into the sky. And you can see in this photo, the pillars there are kind of blending into the building across the street. So is it worth buying this film? Well, I did actually find it very nice not to have to change to a new roll of film so often. And if you don't mind a high contrast photo and your camera can accept it, then yeah, I definitely recommend trying it out. And talking about price, at the moment, for me, uh, 100 shots of Shanghai GP3 and 100 shots of my regular film, Alfred HP5, would cost exactly the same amount, so 56 pence per photo. But yes, if this gets a bit cheaper for me, or if it's cheaper for you in your location, I could see this film being a pretty good budget option. Okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.